Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Welcome to Easy Learn, and this is a new episode that is going to start after episode 18. Welcome to episode 19, and in this, today's lecture, we are going to discuss a flux linkages, inductive parameters, magnetism, flux, and these type of parameters that are closely related to inductors. Before going to proceed, let's recap what we have already discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we were discussing about the active elements. Let me remind you. Uh, we were almost discussed about, uh, yeah, we discussed about the voltage source. Uh, there are the two types of the voltage source that are time invariant and the time dependent, different representation in the networking and different response demonstrations according to them and then current source and there are again two different types of the schemes that uh, how they are current voltage relationships and series parallel circuits, voltage divide or current divides, all these circuits we already discussed in the previous lecture and finally controlled source or the dependent source that in a network depends at an another point its value depends at another point uh, so it is a controlled variable that we already discussed so what we are going to do do today we are just uh, taking another step towards the networking and in today's lecture we are going to discuss a dot convention what does it mean dot convention always occurs in the transformers this is the most widely example that is given whenever we discuss this dot convention uh, the dot conventions a transformer is a perfect example i think so let's start today's lecture and first of all before going to proceed just coming here and this is a just a solenoid and but just uh, coming here solenoid before coming to the solenoid let's let me discuss first something on a smooth draw you can see a very beautiful fine sheet here and i'm just going to draw a piece of the conductor here if i can if i can exactly because this is a mouse again the same issues i cannot draw much better and i'm not good in drawing uh, and even with the mouse i can't draw zero percent good in with especially mouse okay let's suppose this is a piece of the conductor and having too many free electrons available in it and enough electrons that electricity can easily pass through it and if the current is connected and any source is connected let's suppose a voltage source and the current definitely will be there if there is zero resistance and uh, with the, with this current we can suppose here uh, that there is an always electromagnetic field around the around the wire along the naked uh, naked wire especially the conductor and the lamination is especially used to minimize these effect because th they are ultimately uh, considered as a losses later on when the two or the more wires are taken closely and are going to parallel and uh, th these effects combine and that's the main reason we wanted to minimize any losses and the hysteric losses these type of the different losses we will discuss later on okay uh, let's just just a more simplest case first when the current is going to flow through this and there we can see easily an electromagnetic field or simply electric field around it but closely whenever a electric field this is always adjusted and linked with a magnetic field and we cannot minimize these effects okay let's just uh, discuss uh, this is a 360 degree means in all direction if it is an round shape uh, a conductor 360 degree uh, uh, electromagnetic field can be seen around this wire what we can do right now we if we wanted to use it um, it is just a piece of waste not actually the waste but according to our desire we cannot use if we want to use we have to be uh, we have needed device that must be here here around this the mean this type of a lamination that is covering both from 360 degree but if we wanted to use this field its throw is very little this is the, the just the same case like if if I am able to draw a piece of the li um, uh, torch light, you can see its throw is like this. This is the throw of the light, torch light, and, and here is an object, it is going to be lighten up. But if there is a simple a bulb uh, that is have the same wattage capacity, same electricity it is consuming, but its throw is uh, on the 360 degree, and we cannot able to focus a specific target and if we wanted to achieve this uh, at a sp action at a distance and we wanted to perform this action wirelessly through a distance uh, we want a special type of the uh, special uh, wanted to cover the special distance and uh, uh, this is on not possible with a simple connector with a round shape 
then what we can do actually there is a specific way if we bound this wire and in such a shape like spiral shape or spring shape you can see like this shape this is uh, just looking the top view if you actually look from the uh, front or uh, sorry top, top view this is the side view this view like at the top view you can see like this the two piece of the wire one from the bottom and one from the top and the hollow space can be seen from the uh, upper side and downside, but the, from the sideways it is just looks like that uh, in the 2D diagram. And if what's the benefit of this? Actually, if we again now uh, supply a piece or uh, supply some uh, connected to the current uh, voltage source, you what we can see here, uh, uh, except uh, rather than splitting the electromagnetic field in the 360 degree, now uh, it is a specific uh, position. Now this is a case like a torch. We have just arrange it and uh, to the focused point uh, in such a way that the most of this magnetic field can be seen inside this coil like uh, if we change the color from here right now like that maximum field can be seen inside the solenoid and now after passing through this it is again splitting up in the 360 degree again what we need to do if you want to use this uh, definitely because it is again separating up it's not going to the same sp same way as you can see uh, this is not a case of the torch but if you want to use it like here uh, again we have an other solenoid and what we need it is useful for us if we catch this field and the maximum field into this coil and this is the case of the mutual inductance if you remember in case of the uh, uh, magnetism uh, or in case of the previous episode when we discussed the inductor inductor we discussed all these cases there and i said that this uh, if the flux is generated in the same coil and the uh, effect is discussed in the same coil what uh, it is generated for example if it is connected with the voltage source like here and it is continuously changing and this is the specific demand actually uh, you need to connect a specific type of the source that depends upon the time that is uh, time dependent we already discussed the active elements in the previous episode so I'm not going to uh, details in again and again um, uh, this is the, the different types of the voltage source as compared to this one so if you are not missing the previous episode go and watch and see what's the difference between these two type of the sources so these are the two different types of the sources actually we need here is a time dependent source like that this one that is varying sinusoidally or varying its value actually not sinusoidally uh, particular but varying this is the main main point right now suppose that it's a sinusoidal case and uh, varying its value with respect to time we need to we connected this and it means that now the flux that is generated here it is also changing flux with respect to time because the value is changing the flux depend on the current and if the current in the coil is continuously changing its polarity with respect to time it means that the flux that is generated continuously changing also so if you got this point it means that uh, now uh, we are going to proceed the flux that is generated and we need to catch this flux and first of all uh, let me remind you that if we discuss all the effect of the flux right now in this coil and the generator uh, it is the called the primary coil because this is our basic coil which is connected to the voltage source this is a source coil that is generating the flux and if we are discussing the flux effects also in it and analysis is also going to discuss only in this coil there is no other coil then we will call it as a self inductance means that the inductance that is produced and analyzed on the same coil that is called the self inductance and represented with the l if you remember in the previous discussion we already discussed in details and now if we uh, have another coil and here we have a particular type of the circuitry that is connected with this end and uh, the flux that is coming from this side uh, reaches here and passes through this uh, solenoid and we can see here there are the different types of polarity that can be achieved but let's see for a moment because this is a time variant we cannot say this is a positive end or this is a negative end because next moment it may be the next uh, because it is always changing maybe at this point this is a positive and negative but when it reaches to this point the polarity is reversed and this will become negative and this will become positive but for a moment of the discussion we will define whenever we define in the case of the time variant dependent sources like this type of the sources that depends on the time and its polarity is changing continuously we will define the plus or minus points at a specific moments we will not say that it will continue throughout because it's not dc source that is not changing its polarity uh, and continuously going in the same position 
okay let's suppose that for a moment this is a positive terminal and this is the negative terminal what we will say here uh, actually when the flux passes through it and here we can see we, a voltage is generated and we can use this voltage here if we have a different type of the load uh, here connected in series or parallel whatever we want to use or even if we have only uh, the voltmeter here we can analyze the, either the voltage is generated or not this can be s very simply uh, simplified we can only say the voltage is generated in the secondary coil and then we call it uh, that this is a first coil and this is the second coil the first coil or the uh, one coil that is the connected to the source is taken as the primary coil p r i m a r y because i'm not able to write here with the mouse so i'm not able to i'm not just writing i'm just writing the short forms here for the representation and this can be taken as the secondary coil so why not we just represent with s okay primary and the secondary there are the two coils that are now replaced with the short forms primary and the secondary coils uh, okay let's just proceed and coming back to the main point uh, dot convention for the couple circuits first thing i need to best for the proceeding i want to tell you about this this episode will be the largest episode so far in the season because this lecture uh, is a little bit lengthy and i want to cover this lecture in a single episode so it may be time consuming so be patient don't worry about that because i my thought is almost almost what you can say uh, it's out of order <laughs> um, I, uh, after giving a lecture on the urdu version uh, that was above 60 minutes and unfortunately uh, two times the lecture is discarded and it takes three hours to record the lecture approximately so my thought is approximately not well I'm feeling sick by the way anyway coming back to the main discussion the current I1 that is flowing through this circuit um, we call it as a first coil and uh, the current I2 is flowing through this circuit and there is another coil there are the two coils I1 and I2 and let's suppose the current I1 is flowing through this circuit and the flux is arbitrarily generated and if we want to uh, s let's suppose these are the con just conceptual lines actually I already told you the, uh, the, the, the they have no relation with the actual work they are just for the sake of understanding because if we draw them it's much easier for us to identify to analyze the circuit that is the main reason we are using every time and another coil that is catching the these magnetic field lines that is said to be these two coils or these two circuits whenever these two circuits that one is connected with uh, with the source and the other that induced voltage then these two types of circuit as shown is called as the uh, these two circuits are the coupled these coils are said to be coupled and the winding constitute a transformer this is actually the case of the transformer and if we know the details of the transformer definitely uh, according to the construction if we construct the transformer or we know the details of the transformer definitely we will be able to uh, current uh, we, then we were able to, uh, to what we can do is Changing in the current in the one coil, it is possible to compute the magnitude and the direction of the voltage in the induced second coil. For example, uh, we are be able to two able to calculate the two things. I will uh, you can see here. First of all, these are the decoupled coil in case of the transformer. Two important construction parameters. If we kn uh, if we know the, about the construction parameter, we are able to calculate these two things that are really important in case of the transformer and any coil that is magnetically coupled with the other one. What are the two parameters? First one is the we need to know about the coefficient of the mutual inductance because these are the in case of the transformer it is understood that the, there must be at least two coils this is understood there is no doubt it because one is the primary source and the other through the coil through which we are obtaining our output is the secondary source so the primary and the secondary two coils that are connected with each other are the magnetically coupled and it means that the first coil that is uh, the primary that is and the second is the secondary but no doubt there more there are uh, the transformers that have more than two coils and more widely used ne networking and we will discuss all the things later on because this is the largest series so far on easy learn as i'm sure this will be uh, going so far so 
first thing we need to know about the coefficient of the mutual inductance what we can do if we know about the coefficient of mutual induction this is very useful because we can compute the magnitude of the voltage how much voltage for example in this secondary coil is induced through this coil this can be, uh, be calculated if we uh, understand the coefficient of the mutual inductance so what does it mean it is very very important and we need to know about exactly the coefficient of the mutual inductance second thing that is the dot marking or the convention dot convention or dot marking Mo in some books you will see uh, the as the title of the lecture our lecture is the dot convention but in many books you are you, you can also see the dot marking dot convention marking is can be seen but actually this is just a stamped dot is actually stamped on the transformer because all times we are not able to get open the transformer transformer windings are hidden and they cannot uh, we cannot see the transformer winding when oh my god i just forget to one thing more that is really important now we are going to discuss the this type of uh, the coil for example this is a wire and we can turn around and uh, change it into uh, this shape to make a solenoid actually the right word for this coil and if there is a piece of uh, a special piece like this is a piece and we want to wound our coil on it so that it change uh, the shape uh, into a spiral shape and become a solenoid what we will do here there are the two different and special schemes just look at closely this is my wire and what I can do here I turn around my coil into this and then going turning around and then again it is turning around you can see you can see what here that my first point that is going above this and then second is hidden means because this is not a 360 degree picture that is hidden behind this piece of the metal metallic piece or whatever this piece this is going to be backside so my my won't continue but in the backside hidden and again my turn completed when it comes back to the front again and then I'm continuously using this scheme you can see this is what I uh, need and this is called a now become a solenoid whatever we if we connect it uh, with the with the other sources or whatever this is a special type of the winding and by winding this uh, on any piece there are the two techniques always this is for example right now because you can see uh, I start my first turn above this uh, coil and then repeating and I continue my last turn you can see is hidden and when it is completed one two and three when it is completed is it, you can see there are the three turns uh, number of the turns is equals to three so uh, whenever we uh, discuss a solenoid there are the number of the turns always need to be uh, kept in mind before always analyzing a coil there are the number of the turns that should be kept in mind second thing here it is the uh, special type of the winding and uh, if you take closely look on it we can call it as a clockwise winding because first turn is taking above and the second is uh, going means it is going to be like this clockwise I'm sorry, <laughs> I draw it um, uh, wrong. Uh, I just coming back. This is not a right way uh, actually to draw. This is actually a clockwise type winding, uh, and there is our solenoid, for example, because this is not a 3D picture. And there is an other way to uh, uh, to again uh, draw uh, to wound. Uh, that is the anti-clockwise way. What we need to do here is start the winding from the other direction and like that, like this type of the winding. And this is, you can see, now I am winding and this is my final turn. Means start from the backside and again, again rotating in the wrong direction, in the opposite direction, not actually wrong direction, in the opposite direction, sorry. This is the right word, opposite direction. These two windings are wounded in the opposite direction and this thing need to be kept in mind while analysis that both coils are winded in opposite direction or in the right direction because if we wound the wire in the opposite direction, maybe the polarity of the in, uh, voltage that is induced in the second coil or the second coil may be changed so our polarity is the is a is a sole target is important and is a apex point we need to focus right now it's it's a, for example here we have a positive and negative and the voltage is induced and what is the polarity here if the flux is generated for example flux is uh, generated and 
flowing through this and uh, passing through and the voltage is induced not out but what is the polarity for checking with the polarity this is one of the most important point that we need to check out either the clockwise winding or the clock anti clockwise so just removing my these last okay these are the two winding shapes and uh, very important to remember and the second number of the turns here you can see three number of the turns and again uh, starting from this point to this point this is the first second three again there are the three number of the turns you can easily see and the, if the number of the turns differs it's it's the magnitude differs the first thing that is we call it here the magnitude of the voltage that varies according to the number of the turns so second thing is the direction of the voltage so both points will be covered in details uh, just stay connected and learn because this is easy learn providing the free education to all of you guys okay students uh, two windings are shown on the magnetic core winding sense is indicated for the okay now it's time to start analyzing and we need to draw the two windings here and just going downward a little bit because uh, oh my god I'm so sorry I'm not good in actually drawing so what I can do here just just consider it is a straight line these are the this is actually the frame of the ferromagnetic material oh my god ferromagnetic material i forget one thing that is so important how can i forget about this one okay this is a piece of the solenoid and uh, as i told you here the it is not able to throw and it is not going in the straight way you can see all the flux again scattered in 360 degree almost when it it is coming out of the solenoid and if we want to catch and throw it to the maximum distance as you i'm giving here the example of the throwing uh, you can see this is a very beautiful example of the uh, light torch light and uh, if we want to throw and catch the maximum magnetic flux into this coil and make sure the max flux linkages are the maximum both uh, so uh, like in like a way that uh, uh, for example let's pose 10 flux 10 is the number that the flux is produced in the through the coil one and uh, by using this mechanism very few lines are entering into the flux uh, coil two we can say all the flux is almost lost very f just one uh, flux is one percent flux is catched or ten percent flux is catched but 90 percent is lost and if we want to catch the maximum magnetic flux what we need to do there must be a medium we are now not uh, connect we almost wirelessly connected not physically connected but there must be a medium through which the flux will will prefer to follow not going into the air arbitrarily 360 degree there must be a specific path we provide it so this is uh, done through the ferromagnetic material uh, this coil this is a piece of the coil this is going to be wound like this suppose this is a ferromagnetic material and we are going to wind our winding here in this sense oh my goodness why we choose a different color to represent it yeah for example we are going to wind this is not actually physically connected because this winding of the is is laminated first we are going to laminate uh, this piece of the so, uh, ferromagnetic material with the help of a, a paper or with the help of uh, uh, with the help of anything, just we need to uh, so, uh, re we need to cover it so that our solenoid is not directly connected to the ferromagnetic material. Uh, so then, if we connect it with the terminals, all we need to do is our flux that is maximum produced in the coil is is the preferred path. Is this this is the preferred path? It will going to flow its direction can be determined with using the right hand rule i will discuss later on but right now it's it's the preferred path for the flux it's maybe direction i'm just uh, arbitrarily drawing the direction uh, it may be it in this direction it may be in this but it's only in one direction don't go be confused and now this is the preferred path and it is going the specific circle path it is adopted and if we have an other coil here that is wounded on the another side opposite side or another coil that is wounded here it can catch the maximum magnetic flux the same is the case here when we want, want to wound a coil on the arm of the ferromagnetic material what we will do we actually laminate it first because no physical connection no wire wire connection 
all the things that is done connected is the coupled coils that is the mutually inducted and mutually coupled we will call it as uh, the action at a distance and wirelessly just connection is the flux so discussion is uh, continued to and oh, I'm, so I'm sorry it's mic failure I'm sorry uh, again now coming back to the main point that this is a piece of the ferromagnetic material and what I was trying here coming back to this and this is our ferromagnetic material and if the coil it's like a transformer when we discuss the case of the transformer the winding is wounded on the ferromagnetic material it can uh, the ferromagnetic material have the different types of uh, different types of the ferromagnetic material are available some are good and some are not good and in in sometimes we are even using multiple strips of the ferromagnetic material means this is not uh, this is a very big material means you are not only using a single uh, a single piece we are going uh, strips of this uh, like this wafers uh, sliced on each other and even laminated with each other uh, and different slices are laminated on each other and it is com combined F when combining all this this uh, product will be uh, uh, this product come into have market okay and now the time is to wound one coil on this piece of the uh, this very beautiful piece of the uh, ferromagnetic material welcome back uh, I just paused the video for a little while and just correct this diagram and uh, now we are going to start our winding uh, winding this uh, this is the way what I choose to wound let's let me tell you and look at the closely first oh my goodness again first turn of winding I don't know what's wrong with my hand today it's again slipping first turn you can see here is upward and then going the downward means again I'm switching upward, winding it again in the clockwise direction and when I got it here and again winding here you can look closely for the inspection and analysis and here we go just two ones are enough for the analysis and this is our first coil I'm just writing here this is our first coil one one coil one one and if we have an other coil here and again just look closely it's winding again the same winding we have to look look the winding with respect to the other always you are defining first uh, your standard first your specific uh, target by yourself for example like now this is my uh, this is my ideal I've, I have already winded one coil so I'm just looking at this this is a clockwise for my point of view so I'm going to wind this again another coil that is relevant to this uh, and this is again two turns and this is the final turn is coming out of through the through hidden and we cannot see this means this is again in the clockwise pattern what we can do here it we can connect our circuitry like this is a way we can connect our circuitry going through this and uh, we need to connect a resistance in series because if we connect a resistance in series there must be a current and the value of the current we are able to calculate if the resistance and the voltage is known we just call this resistance as R and uh, R1 because if we have we need another resistance for later purposes we will number and figure it out and this here it is a source that is dependent on the time you can see this is the actually representation of the voltage source that depends on the time and uh, this is a voltage source we just need to write here V G of time T okay so it means that this is a voltage source that depends with respect uh, that depends on time that is varying with respect to time and here we have uh, a voltage that 
for the moment right now the polarity is positive negative is this side we just need to mark a point here this is called dot marking i just need to mark a dot this dot is used to show that this is a positive point because this is understood that the other point is the negative and when we mark this dot this doesn't actually means actually the meaning is different actually meaning is this that this point is is a point and this dot need to be marked here on on this coil also i will explain this you later on but just consider it as a positive dot is used to represent the positive and uh, if the current is flowing through this circuit let's suppose we call it as a i1 the i1 current is flowing through this circuit and there is a voltage that we are able to uh, identify this voltage and this voltage is taken as a v1 this is there is a voltage we call it as a v1 voltage and this voltage v1 polarity we are here actually at the terminals if you understand there is an important thing if you uh, already analyzed very good but if you didn't uh, right now consider now i'm going to divert your attention toward this have you look uh, there are the two different voltages i used this is v1 and this is vg and uh, vg is actually a different term and v1 is actually different and these two terms are not equal now you will say why some students confused still because this is a voltage source primarily and suppose it is providing me 10 volts but after passing through a resistive circuit you can understand and this is a resistive circuit and it is connected in series and if you remember my words when uh, in the previous episode i was telling you about the series connected circuit the parallel connected circuit and in series the voltage varies while in parallel voltage doesn't vary but the current varies so this is a series circuit and in this circuit the voltage varies uh, and depends on the resistance but the current doesn't vary so here this v1 will be different and can be calculated if we know the value of the exactly current and the resistance r so actually this is the v1 now the flux that is going to be generated through this coil is through this v1 because it depends on v1 it is uh, uh, obtaining in our at our terminals at the solenoid this v1 is connected this v1 not vg vg is the source that is that is far from the terminals that is not achieving that is not that is not actually receiving at the terminals of the solenoid what we are receiving is the v1 and v1 is the responsible for all the flux that is going to be generated through the coil one and let's suppose i say that the flux that is generated through coil one is uh, now whatever but it is going to be uh, taken a specific direction that is induced in this coil uh, i know that there is a many flux lines that need to be represented in this ferromagnetic material but for the sake of the simplicity i'm just hiding all the lines and just representing whole scenario with a single line and important thing is its magnitude and direction magnitude can be calculated through the field analysis first analysis in any circuit is the physical phenomena what we will see here physically phenomena you can see all the physical phenomena this is a coil 2 and this is a, there are the two coils coil 1 and coil 2 that are physically uh, 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 that are bounded on a ferromagnetic same ferromagnetic material and this is a physical phenomena that they may be connected uh, mutually connected and coupled now it's time to analyze the field interpretation and if you want to go into the details of the further let me uh, remind you to come back to the theory again two windings are shown on the magnetic core now you had seen that there are the two coils one and two first one is the primary source of coil because we connected the vg so it becomes our primary coil while the second one is the uh, secondary coil why because there is a resistance that is going to be connected you uh, and now we are going to connect a load 
and this will become a second coil if we change the color here to dis differentiate and this is this is suppose we have a circuit and series connected and this resistance is our load and we will taken it as r2 that is consuming and just suppose suppose that the i1 current that is right now flowing into this point from the dot and we need to consider the direction and the polarity of the current and remember that first of all we need to define the flux that is generated through coil 1 one end is marked with a dot and assume that the current flows into this dot here you can see this is the one end of the coil number one i mark this point with a dot and i assume that the current is entering into this solenoid from this dot now let's proceed and continue the discussion first step of the analyzation what is the first step two windings here okay cause a magnetic field which is an action at a distance definitely because time variant source is connected and to induce a voltage according to the faraday law we already discussed according to faraday law if we wanted to induce a voltage in the secondary coil for example in our case it is a coil number two we need to connect a time varying source to the coil one so that the flux that is produced of the coil one is also varying with respect to time not a constant flux because varying flux can produce or induce a voltage in the second coil if the constant flux it doesn't vary how much stronger it is how much potential it is has in it but no doubt we are not able to uh, catch the flux if the, it is a constant flux it is the waste it is not uh, we cannot use it to induce voltage so we need a specific type of the flux that depends on time that is varying with respect to time so in our case we already used a time variant source here you can see it means our flux is continuously varying with respect to time according to the ampere's law but why we are using here ampere's law we are using the modified form of the ampere's law because right now we need to calculate or uh, define the magnitude of the magnetic field intensity and this can be done if we use the ampere's law this is not new you are already familiar with this formula and i hope that you already memorized in your brains because this is from the equation 2 of episode 10 as a reference you can see from the right side uh, so this is not a new db db actually uh, means the polarity or oh, sorry magnitude of the flag um, magnetic field here and it is very important to analyze equals to micro i dl cos alpha 4 pi r squared this is very easy formula and i hope you already know this by using this formula we are able to calculate the magnetic field density okay if we calculate the magnetic field density which is our the magnitude of the field how much magnitude of the field how much flux that is generated it is actually value can be obtained but now it comes coming towards the second step there is a magnetic flux associated with the magnetic field whenever a magne whenever a magnetic field is generated in a coil uh, there must be a magnetic flux phi that is always associated with the magnetic field so let's for calculating the form we always there is a formula b a cos theta b a simply actually the surface area uh, or a specific uh, formula that we already discussed in equation number one of episode 11 uh, that is the integral surface area b cos theta ds and by using this we are able to calculate the how much magnetic flux can be generated so direction can be calculated experimentally now the point arises uh, the direction of the flux that is generated through the coil one and the answer is this that it is can be calculated according to the very small experiment that is using your right hand rule how we can use right hand rule uh, right hand rule is a very very 
easily usable and very smart way to calculate the direction or the polarity of the uh, uh, so, uh, of uh, the flux if the fingers wrap around the coil uh, with the fingers pointing in the direction of the ground the thumb of the right hand indicates the direction of the flux right now because you cannot see my hand just point your hand like this this is your thumb right now my hand is like this this is my hands pose actually this is my fingers here uh, just come your close come closer your hand right hand to the screens uh, to this coil one like just if I draw here again and this is pose our right hand and the fingers are going to curl palm of our, our palm of our right hand is into the screen towards screen means if we wanted to wrap our fingers this will go towards screen not our side do you got it my point what does it means it means that this indication uh, this actually this is the way of the current my right red arrow shows that's the why our fingers are going to be wrapped into this direction uh, in, in the direction of the current that is the direction of the current so we uh, wrap our fingers in this way and uh, so our thumb will indicate the polarity of or the direction of the flux so this is the direction right now upward both coils interestingly are having face facing the same flux and the same upward direction this is a very good scenario i use this scenario because this is the simplest case both coils have the same number of the turns both coils are bounded clockwise both coils are facing the same direction of the flux from downside toward up so we can say the flux continues to follow this path uh, actually this the, the direction will vary if we have a dip coil here like this case if we have a coil like that then the maybe our uh, uh, we will call that our winding number of the turns are same Bo coil is mounted clockwise but but there you can see there the flux is downward so then we ha may have a complex case but right now this is the simplest case that the both coils are facing upward in a clockwise traction flux so this is the simplest case and uh, you know before going towards a complex case you always need to start from the basic and the simplest case so step number three since both the coils are on the same magnetic core linking flux can be described as a flux to one and here you're gonna see the again because this is comes towards the mutual inductance one coil two coil that uh, whenever we have an involvement of the coils more than one we will call it as a mutual inductance and the mutual inductance coefficients there are the two not one because the coil are more than one like if you remember uh, this uh, m uh, this is taken from the previous course so let me just remind you there are the two dots that i just used to represent first one is the effect and the second one is the cause this is the exact order that you need to use effect and the cause order is this is very important to select and write the exactly right order and if you forget about it uh, we cannot do anything because this is these things need to be kept in mind effect cause effect cause effect cause just repeat it 10 times so it you will um, this that's this thing should be kept at the bottom of your mind so you never forget about these things the best way to remember things is by writing not by repeating and speaking the best way is to by writing yourself with your hands since both coils are on the same magnetic core linking flux can be described as the flux to one m is the uh, here the mutual inductance and the here you uh, the order is the effect and cause here we have order two one because as i told you m in other words this is effect and ec effect and cause like here if we have a flux what is the effect 
this flux that is produced in the ferromagnetic material it will continue in the ferromagnetic material because this is the most likely path and easiest path for the flux to follow it will not going in this space because going space it need to need need energy it is escalating from this path and definitely need energy and which is right now a very uh, it is almost impossible if you inter intercept it with another uh, same setup bring closer to the highly uh, energized uh, parallel setup uh, in the jurisdiction um, then this is possible but right now this is not possible that this flux will uh, leave this system in, into the space so let's just discuss that uh, here we have the flux and it is the direction of the flux like right now it is the clockwise pattern and now we are stacking to write the direction write the flux specific name this flux effect effect of this flux can be seen in the coil 2 because the first one is the source coil this is the primary coil and this is the secondary coil we are watching its effect in the secondary coil so right now the attention uh, point of our attention is uh, towards the coil number two voltage is going to be induced in the second coil so we are going to say that effect can be seen in the coil two so just writing here the coil effect is two that is affected coil and the second is the cause who is responsible for the production of this flux this flux where does this the, where is the source of this flux source of this flux is the first coil that is responsible for the production because it is connected with the voltage source time varying voltage source that means it it is the primary coil so we just re represent this here type it as a one so finally we got the name of this flux this flux name is two one not twenty one two one there is a space between uh, when we write it not 21 you will write it uh, call it as flux to one it means order is effect affected coil is the two and the cause that is the first coil that affect this one now what is the next step coming back toward our main discussion and the lecture number of the flux linkages okay now after the order is uh, we got the order flux to one is uh, in the ferromagnetic material right now now the discussion is going to word the number how many flux linkages can be there remember that two flux linkages can be seen one flux linkages is for the coil number one and the second flux linkages can be seen for the coil two the first flux linkages we call it as psi one is equals to n1 phi two one okay so if we know the number of the f uh, coils here for example if you don't uh, uh, if you can uh, in a transformer there are the two n is two so we will call it as two the psi one is equals to two flux to one if we know the value of the flux but right now if we don't know about the flux value what we can do there are the other formulas in the market too <laughs> Uh, market of networking <laughs> okay in terms of the Faraday law Faraday law states that the psi 1 can be calculated from voltage at the terminals what is the voltage at the terminals voltage at terminals is psi 1 is equal to integral minus infinite 2 times t v1 dt what is this integral minus infinite 2 times t v1 dt this is the time frame uh, that is used when uh, in in the form formula this is the integral version of the faraday law if you remember because the reference is here if you say that at any point that if you uh, if you refuse to admit that we had not discussed this later on that is the main reason always in the right side this graphics is here with my lead pencil that always remind you there is the basically comes from episode 11 go saw equation 5 reference equation okay 
So this is psi1 in our case, if we are focusing on the coil1, this flux linkage of 1, the voltage will be V1. In case of the flux linkage for the two net network, second network, V will be V2. So this equation psi one, uh, will be psi1 is equal to this. We are going to compare equation number 1 and equation number 2 because this is psi1 and this is psi1. So left hand side will be compared with the left hand side and the right hand side will be compared with this equation's right hand side. Both equations. So psi1, if this is and this is equals, it means this and this portion will also be equal. So n1 psi2 1, n1 psi2 1 is equals to this integral minus infinity to time t v1 dt. What we need to calculate here is the psi to one or flux phi to one, sorry, phi to one. So phi to one can be separated by uh, by just uh, taking the n one to the right hand side and it will go into the denominator one over n one integral minus infinite to time t v one dt. So this is our equation number star and we will use it for later on references that is why I just take it as equation number star. Next comes the point four. This, what is the point number four? This is the flux uh, phi to one. It is changing with respect to time. A voltage is induced due to this flux in the coil two. Flux to one phi to one is changing with respect to time. A voltage is induced because we know that the uh, uh, flux to one that is continuously changing because you know that the coil. Uh, first coil that is connected with the uh, voltage source uh, and the first coil uh, is connected to a such a source that is changing its voltage continuously changing its polarity and uh, if voltage is changing here in this circuit and flux that is produced and induced is continuously varying flux with the uh, pass passage of the time flux linkages in winding two uh, for the case for the winding two, as I said in the previous uh, episode, uh, in the previous sheet, you can see here flux linkage is equal to n two phi two one. For the first coil, this will be subscripts can be changed according to the modified form phi one one one. And here for the two psi two n two, and the most important thing here, the flux linkage is psi is again two one. The order is same because in our uh, network, this is uh, only one flux. And this is the flux to one. What we need to do here, flux to one. Uh, this is the important parameter, flux to one. Uh, write and note down it because this is the fl first flux, and there is another flux that will be induced in this coil. And now we wanted to discuss it. Induced voltage in the coil two has a different magnitude, and now we have uh, again the formula that is the Faraday law modified form in the differential case V2 is equal to D psi flux linkages with respect to time derivation of the flux linkages with respect to time and in our case this is uh, for the volt, uh, coil 2 and V2 becomes flux linkages 2 derivation of the flux linkages 2 so uh, this is taken from the episode 11 equation number 4 as a reference just for the reminding you if you in case don't um, don't uh, admit it we already discussed we know that the flux is equals to mi in case of the mutual inductance and this is taken from the episode 12 equation number three and the coefficient of the mutual induct inductance was there introduced and we said that psi is equals to li in case of the self-inductance and psi is equals to mi in case of the mutual inductance to relate the flux with the crunch so just uh, just modifying this equation According to our desire here, uh, we are wanted to modify this equation for the flux linkages too. So flux linkages too is equal to m2i. Now you can see the order. What is the order? Mutual inductance, effect and cause. Effect in the coil two and the production and it's the source is one. So order of the subscript subscripts is taken as the mutual inductance to one, and the i one is the current. So put equation number five and four this is our equation number five and from this equation we will get the flux linkage of the coil two and flux linkage of the coil two can be substituted here to get the exact what we need the voltage this is what we need here it is a voltage 
and that is the main reason we spent approximately 40 minutes here to find this voltage and this voltage is our v2 because uh, this voltage is named as v1 and this is a v2 and v2 that voltage induced here can be calculated by using this formula uh, v2 and the flux linkages for the coil 2 if we put this value m21 uh, and i1 here and this will become uh, Question number five, putting equation five and four. V2 is equal to derivation with respect to time of M2I and I1. And uh, this here you can see because we are now using a coil that have a specific uh, value of the mutual inductance. Let's suppose our coil have a particular mutual inductance uh, and it doesn't varies with, with, with the passage of the time that is independent to our physical conditions. and. Uh, um, for the sake of the simplicity we call that our inductor is not varied varying its value let's suppose on the data sheet is mentioned uh, 10 henry and we will uh, continue with it, with it and the current that we are obtaining from the i1 that is coming through i1 first circuit it is continuously varying because we have a con uh, time dependent voltage source so v2 is equals to m21 di over dt and di is the di1 so this is the finalized form of the v2 that is going to be induced in this circuit and we will be using it for later on purposes induced voltage in the winding 2 has a magnitude of the m21 volts per unit time rate of the change of the current i1 so uh, according to this definition this is a very simple and the basic definition we are getting here v2 uh, in terms of the v2 we call it as the voltage is equals to m21 volts because voltage is cal calibrated and calculated in the form of the volts so v is equals to m21 volts uh, uh, rate of change of the current with respect to time so this is the uh, simple representative now we are moving towards the final and approximate the ending steps or the terminating section of the our episode and this is the step five not going to bother you again but the direction of the voltage can be found with the lens law this is very important law lens law according to the lens law an induced voltage that is induced in, in a coil in a circuit any type the induced voltage in a coil let's suppose our case because it's our case is a coil in voltage induced in a coil by change of the flux same our case voltage is induced in a coil by the change of the flux tends to establish a current in the direction to oppose the change in flux that produce the voltage means it is trying to establish a current but the direction is opposite to the induced to the source coil to the primary coil uh, no doubt it is uh, going to produce if a current is induced but the direction it is uh, by using the lenz's law so lenz law i'm using here and for the for the sake of mm, just uh, different color i'm just going to choose a specific color this one this color sorry and here if you notice the current direction this is the current direction okay for i1 and it will choose an other current direction like this one opposite direction because its upper point at its upper point the direction of the current is into the coil is into the dot and first of all let's d just discuss the dot here the dot can be taken at this point here why we used to uh, draw a dot and mark the dot of the second coil at the upper point because as i said the both coils both of these coils have the same flux that is going toward upper side flux can be seen that is going toward upside and when flux is going upper side number of the turns are the same actually the number of the turns doesn't matter in the direction case this matters when we are going to compute the magnitude okay then when the flux is going toward the upper side and the uh, and the number of the turns we are also very important that is that uh, that winded in the clockwise direction the both coils so we can say the points is on both coils have the same points that the dot is on the same upper corners actually this dot means that if it is a positive here there is a positive here if it is a negative here it is a negative here this dot means that this point and this point is the same 
this doesn't mean at in the starting of the episode as i told you i will discuss later and now i'm discussing that dot is not for the nomination of the positive not the nomination of the negative because this is continuously changing but but whenever we are discussing a point and we just for the sake of analysis and at a moment we will define that this is a positive at right now then we will call that this dot means this is a positive and this is negative right now we will understand that in the next moment it will be changing its polarity but when it change its polarity from here to negative then it will also change its polarity to negative now the direction of the current is solved out by using lenz law as the induced uh, uh, the source of the flux to one uh, is the uh, is into the dot the current is flowing into the dot and right now the flux is going out of the dot because it is going to oppose because if you look at this current i2 i2 if you inspect and look closer to the i2 uh, and uh, this is going in this direction and again using right hand rule if you now going to apply the right hand rule and this for this current its polarity is different it is opposing this and your right hand now will be looking like this means your palm is now toward your face towards yourself and if your palm is toward yourself uh, you, and uh, uh, and if uh, your palm is towards your yourself sorry 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 i'm i'm so sorry i was not able to write the or uh, 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 just draw the wrong, uh, wrong direction your palm is again in uh, toward the computer toward the screen but now this time what is the changing this is what we are getting right now palm is again toward the other side but the uh, winding direction is changed and now the thumb is downward and what does it means that the induced flux that is going to be taken and uh, due to the i1 there is a flux generated and it will try to oppose the uh, flux that generated it as you can see here the golden or the yellowish color you can see this is the main flux that i used to represent with the flux 2 1 and the flux that is induced due to i2 it is going to take in the opposite direction what does it means that for example this is the uh, we call it as a flux 2 1 and the flux that is now generated in the due to the current i2 induced voltage uh, uh, the, there is a flux also of the coil 2 and this flux is taken as the opposite means affect it, it will affect the coil 1 so we'll record as 1 and it will affect the coil 1 uh, uh, it is the source is coil 2 so it will taken as 1 2 and it is going to oppose the original flux this is the uh, original flux so the direction of the i2 can be uh, calculated by using right hand ru rule again but this time it is understood because if, if it is uh, the first flux is going into the dot now it is going to uh, emitting from the dot because uh, it is uh, uh, trying to oppose our side let's suppose if unfortunately we are not able to identify and we just taking this direction like this again that the flux is going into the dot and if we consider this direction then our uh, then again the right hand rule will tell us that our flux uh, 2 1 1 2 also going in the uh, 1 2 will also take this position toward upper side and what does it means that this will become an active element how does this will become an active element active element uh, how does it become active element because it will behave in this sense that uh, it is pushing again the flux uh, 2 1 is also going in the upper side uh, and the fl flux of the 1 2 is also going to in the upper side and this ultimately uh, add both flux and after adding this will be going to attain a position that is that is turning our circuit to an infinite position infinite current and this will not be gonna be happen in the real world and this is an inductive circuit this is inducing voltage this is taking current from the first circuit how does this circuit can add the current this is of course taking current so this is the wrong position we cannot say that this current will be this is taking uh, this uh, uh, this is taking uh, so uh, its direction is uh, this you will able to see 
the direction of the voltage can be seen okay this is what we already did so this is a very simple graph you can see here this is the first graph in the first graph you can see in first graph uh, is used to represent the voltage and the current waveform in the magnetically coupled network and in, in this network you, what you will see here uh, in this diagram uh, the first this is the vg graph for the vg and that with the any moment this vg is increased and it will take this specific position and do you can see the second diagram this uh, is the coming is the at the coming uh, waveform for the current i1 or the flux to flux to 1 okay the flux that is produced due to this vg and the current that is induced the current that is produced all, uh, to this uh, from the source so if this is increasing and this is also increasing but in a smooth way not in the exact like this way the current is increased with the time intervals t then v2 that is induced in the second coil will be going to down first it increased from zero point to it increased increased no doubt it is first it increased suddenly with a sharp and a stride movements like at a peak but then what happens why it is going downward and then it's taken a zero and a depth position because our current is not changing our voltage isn't changing it current is responsible this i1 is in terms of the v1 not vg you know this i1 is actually dependent on the v uh, v1 and v1 is actually not like increasing like this peak we will also v1 is also having a little bit smoother peak than this one and the i1 also has a smooth peak and flux to one also have a smooth peak and this due to this flux uh, because when uh, when it is changing you can see from this point to this point is changing then the, uh, we have the maximum but when it's changing is going to be reduced and finally it achieves a specific point as i said in the start either the how much flux either the our flux is so strong it has a 100 henry value but, but if it is not changing it is not changing then our voltage induced in the secondary coil will be zero v2 is proportional to the time rate of change of the i1 so one winding is arbitrarily marked one end of the winding with the dot and to uh, and to this terminal connect positive terminal of the battery and the negative remaining end of the battery uh, we just mark first arbitrarily and then second terminal will be considered uh, as uh, the other sources and this is the uh, other discussion you will see here what you are able to see here this is a resist resistance that is connected and uh, here we have a same system but now the changing is the source is now connected with the lower lower network, network low quite quite the coil quite two, and it will become behave as a primary source just for the sake of uh, uh, concept clearing i'm just discussing this is our episode is actually finished right now but for the sake of a little bit concept clearing we are just discussing another case and uh, just just interchanging their position our load is changed to the coil one and now v2 is behaving as a source and responsible for the flux and you can see here the order of the flux flux one two what does it mean why it is changed actually the flux one two it effect effect of this flux is it can be seen in a resistive circuit on an induced voltage network that is the coil number one now and effect and then cause who is the responsible for this flux that is the coil number two and you can see that direction is again same and again all the things that can be seen the network of the figure with a voltage source moved from winding one to the winding two is here and it can be seen these pictures are taken from the book that is the network analysis by van wackenberg that is our main book of the discussion and very very helpful book and the main networking analysis book that I'm following and here you can see three windings now on a magnetic core with dots and the different shapes needed to describe the network for in complex networks as I told you there are more than one uh, representation can be seen uh, for uh, the sake of understanding and then we will use different shapes diamond shapes uh, triangle shapes rectangle square circles these shapes actually define the coupled are the same points for example here the flux is going upper side and the flux is going to be the downside here 
when the flux is going from down bottom toward upside we will taken and call it as the flux is uh, this point for example is marked as dot and here i although the winding is clockwise but this first of all this winding uh, uh, this flux is going downward okay this flux is going downward here then if it is going downward we will uh, just uh, taken the dot here and the second thing is it is marked with an opposite counterclockwise then this will be double negative negative first uh, let's just discuss another circuit here like this and this what we discussed in today's lecture is the two wind coils that are wound in the same direction this coil and this coil are wounded in the same pattern but the flux through coil 1 is increasing from bottom toward upside and the flux in the coil number 3 is increasing from upper side to the downside because this is if connected to the source the flux like this traveling in this way you got it oh my god this is the way my cursor showing so in the coil one it is going from bottom to top and here you can see it from top to bottom so it means that there is either the polarity is uh, so winding direction is same but now the point it's this is the common point this is point and this point this triangle and this triangle is it is marked you got this point because of the uh, because of the direction of the flux this point is going going downward and what if I want the uh, want this uh, in opposite position then this point will go here upward because it will become a double negative first negative means the flux is downward and here it is upward second negative means our winding is in opposite direction as here winding is in opposite direction you can see first turn is going back side and then upper so the flux here can be seen in this upper side this point and this point is the same why because this is winding opposite to this one either the flux here is upward and here is downward but the wind due to the opposite direction of the winding this point can be achieved same at the upper point so this there are the some cases of the transformer and the further discussion inshallah will be continued next time and i think this is the enough from the today's lecture and we will see the further important discussion and concepts in the coming lecture stay tuned voice learn growth this is Zilla. i'm signing off thank you allah, allah hafiz, hafiz.